Hi, in this tutorial I want to go over specifically how to get assets from Maya into Unity and prepare those files in Unity for lighting. This will uh, almost exclusively be focused on environmental situations, um, but of course it can be used in other, other ways as well. I'm going to start in Maya was the first step. Um, the scene uh, has some basic uh, setup already done. Mostly this is a tile texture kind of setup so that uh, almost all of the uh, objects here are using um, a fairly small 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 tile texture so it's very lightweight uh, as we come through. There's a few pieces of information that become important as you prepare to get this out um, one is make sure you understand what the scale is that you're using and what the unit is that you're using. Unity works in meters. One Unity unit is one meter. So I, uh, if I know I'm going to be working uh, in Unity, then I usually uh, make sure that I'm uh, already building in meters and I've gone through and make sure that the size is correct. If once I'm sure that the size is correct, I want to make sure that first of all, I have deleted all of the history um, and everything. The second is that for this hallway in general, I'm going to make sure and freeze the transformations so that the main group and all of the parts of the group have zero, zero, zeros in their translates, rotates, and particularly in their scales. If that's all set up, then you're actually ready to export. Now in this case, I'm going to export three different groups of things. One is the hallway, which is all the geometry. The second thing is an attached light uh, that I'm going to use in various places and a hanging light that I'm going to use in various places uh, in my uh, Unity setup. This will allow me to create some other prefabs that I want to be able to use. So once you're ready, the way that uh, I prefer to do this is not to actually use the Send to Unity or Send to Unreal. Um, I prefer to do it much more manually. But to do that, first I'm going to take just a second and make sure that I've got my Unity project set up. So I am uh, have launched Unity, I'm using 2017.3.1, uh, and I'm going to create a project for the Unity lighting demo. When you go ahead and create this, uh, this will, just like in Maya, create a Unity project file folder uh, and import a collection of extensions, DLLs, uh, some other assets that become important to be able to run. Uh, and open up the Unity um, editor uh, like this. Now what's happening uh, underneath the hood, if I can just take a second and show you this, is that uh, for instance hallway lighting, this is my Maya scene file that I'm working with right now. So the hallway that I'm working with is here. Also all of the images that are important for this are in the source images folder as uh, it should be. And what I've just created, this hallway lighting demo, this looks similar to how we would see a Maya project file, but all of our meaningful assets will, the things that we're going to use in our game will be in this assets folder, and that's where that's going to be set. Okay, so back to Maya. Um, if I'm back in Maya, now what I'm going to use is I'm going to select the hallway, I'm going to use File, Export Selection, uh, and start to work with the with what I've got. Okay, so here I want to make sure that I'm exporting to the right location. So I'm going to come to my new Unity Lighting Demo into my Assets folder. Um, and here you can make new folders or whatever. We can organize that uh, later if we need to. Um, but here is where I'm going to save this exported file. The file format I want to use is FBX. FBX is a great way to transfer assets from package to package. Uh, I'm going to call this hallway. And then there's several settings over here that become important uh, that we can look at. Um, so for instance, the ones that we're going to be most interested in is looking at the file type specific options. There's a number of presets that you can use. In general, for what we're doing here, then we can, uh, there's a few settings that become kind of important. One in the geometry, the default settings here should be fine, smooth mesh, and uh, any referenced assets, assets, although we don't have any. Since this isn't animated, I've turned off animation. That can make things a little bit easier. Uh, I've turned off cameras and I've turned off lights because I'm not doing any of those, even though if those are on, you're probably okay. And the same thing, there uh, is no audio, so we can turn those off. The thing that does make it a little bit easier is if you make sure and turn on embed media. If you embed the media, what this will do is all of the textures will be embedded in the FBX, and so when you move that over into Unity, everything is already um, set up there. 
Now, there are some other things just to point out. We probably won't mess with them here, but if you go into the advanced options, for instance, uh, you can go into the units, and for instance, if you are building in feet and inches, because you're more familiar with that, you can actually have Maya convert it to meters on its way out. Since I'm building in meters, I don't need to do that. Um, and in our case, Unity and uh, Maya actually use the same y-axis up, so we don't have to mess with any of those things as well. But I just want to kind of point those out in case you're going to be doing any sort of other exporting to other things like uh, UE4 or any things like that. Okay, so I'm going to save this uh, here. Uh, what will happen if it all goes well, you'll see down on the bottom that it's just exported the hallway.fbx. If you have any issues, like uh, some of your textures are in the long, wrong location, you'll get a dialog box. It's in your interest to go ahead and remap those textures so you know where they're at before exporting them um, into Unity. It'll just uh, save you some hassle on the back end. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my attach light. So again, export selection. Same place here, I'll do attached light. I'll export that selection and the hanging light. I'm going to export the selection here. So hanging light. So I've got both of those and go ahead and export both of those. All those should be set up. Now back in Unity, what will happen is Unity will recognize, hey, there's new assets that I have set in here. So I want to make sure and import them. By default, it kind of does some really, really quick import. I'm going to do just a little bit of organizing here. I'm going to create a folder that I'm going to call models. Uh, and then I'm going to take these new models that I've brought in and actually drop them in here. Now there's a few settings on the import here that we want to specialize or specify. Here in hallway, I'm going to come uh, over into our settings here and I'm going to start by taking a look at what we've uh, imported. By default, you can see that there's all the geometry. Uh, however, uh, there is none of the textures associated with it new to about Unity 2017. It works a little bit differently with importing textures. Um, I'm going to use for this demo the uh, the legacy uh, methodology. Basically what will happen there is if you use just the legacy methodology and click on apply, what it's going to do is import all of the textures that are associated with the materials that are attached uh, to the surfaces in Maya. And so what you'll see here now is that now all of those textures are applied. We have this new folder called hallway.fbm that has all of the textures that we were using and all the materials. It creates uh, Unity standard materials for all of those surfaces as well. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and come in still with my hallway, tell it that I don't have any animation. When I click on Rig, it still should say None because there is no animation there. But I'm also going to come into the Model section here and turn two things on that are going to be important. One is generate colliders. If we don't have colliders, then when we're using our first or third person character, they'd fall through the floor. So this will make sure that the model generates collisions and understands collisions. But the second thing is we want to make sure that we click the generate light map UVs. What this does is create a second light map set, uh, a second UV set that we can bake our light maps to. If you don't have these checked, when you start to try and do baking, then uh, kind of bad things happen. When you have that set up, you go ahead and click on Apply. This takes a little while because what uh, Unity is now doing is not only, uh, since it's already rebuilt the materials, is it's not only generating mesh colliders for every surface, but it's also creating that second UV set, which can take a little while. All right, I'm going to do that uh, as well with both of these. I controlled select both of those, made sure that I'm using an external, come to the animation, no animation, no rig. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we generate colliders and generate light map UVs even though the colliders we probably don't don't need to worry about. So when I click on uh, apply then that uh, brings that in we should be ready to go. All right. So the second part now is what we would do in Unity uh, to get this um, going. I'm going to drop my hallway into the scene uh, so we can see what's happening here. The default layout in Unity uh, is set up in a way so that we've got this main camera, a directional light, and a skylight um, here. What that means is that suddenly light is pouring in through these because it's not seeing the back sides of the surfaces. Uh, which doesn't, which is great for an outdoor scene, but kind of silly for what we're doing here. The idea with this hallway is it's inside of a mountain, so there wouldn't be any sort of this ambient light or light set up in the space, but you can still see it. Just as a side note, you can actually come in and with any of these objects here, um, if you select the geometry 
over in the inspector you can actually come into the lighting section of the mesh render um, and you can change the cast shadow so that it uses what's called two-sided and what that does is suddenly the it sees the back side of that geometry for us I, I don't really care because we're going to do uh, some other adjustments here but just so you understand what's what's going on there now I want to have absolute control over all the lighting here. I don't want to have any ambient light uh, kind of flowing through the space. So to take control of that, I'm going to come to the window pull down menu, lighting, and out to settings. In the settings here, uh, I'm going to do several things. One is I'm going to tell it, look, I, I don't want a skybox. I don't want you to spend any time working on that. Second, for the environmental lighting, I'm just going to tell this that I want it to use completely black so that what you can see is that the only light that we're going to see here right now is that big sunlight, which, uh, of course, we, we don't need. Now, the rest of the settings here should be generally pretty fine. Uh, notice that auto-generate is turned on. What this means is that if there are any static objects in the scene, objects marked as static, then Unity will automatically start baking the light into them if you've got the appropriate lighting set up. Now, last thing I'm going to do is come in, grab that directional light, and delete it so that my scene is actually completely black. Now, this is actually what I want to do because I want to have control over how that lighting uh, is set up. Now, uh, let me show you just a little bit about how some of the lighting works here. I'm going to come in and create a point light um, that's set up inside of the space. Uh, if I move that point light around, we can start to see what's happening. The point light has several handles. One is the range um, that's here, and of course there's the actual translate, uh, rotate, and scale gizmo. But with this light selected, this point light, I can come over and start to do things like adjust the intensity of what's happening, or adjust the range. Uh, if we look at that range getting smaller or larger. so. Adding more light into a space can be a combination of playing with the two. Sometimes you might want a light with a very small fall off that's very, very bright, or um, there's a lot of different ways that you might be interested in looking at this. Some of the things I do want you to notice, though, is that if we come in and create, say, a new sphere and stick it in this space, then sure enough, that light is indeed illuminating this sphere. However, that sphere is not casting shadows. Unity's strategy in almost all situations is to not layer a bunch of stuff on top for graphic fidelity. You choose what are important things to you. This is kind of opposite of the way that Unreal works, where kind of everything's turned on and you turn stuff off. Uh, in this case, everything's kind of turned off and you turn things on. So for instance, with this light, you notice that by default, the shadow type is set to no shadows. If we want to have shadows, we have to make sure and come down and turn those shadows on. And then once we have those shadows turned on for that light, then we're going to be able to start to see um, how that works. Now, the the shadow here is still pretty unrealistic. It's completely black. Here, let me just hide that grid so we don't get confused with that. It's completely black. Sometimes additional lights will help soften that. And also the ability to start to work with baked light, where things like bounce light or other global illumination techniques uh, start to come into play. Now by default, uh, none of this is being baked. You'll notice that down here on the right where you usually see that, that has remained empty. Nothing's happened. And the reason is because we don't have any objects in this scene that are marked as static, meaning that they don't move, meaning that they won't be calculated for static light maps. To do this, to turn that on, just click on the uh, on whatever object you're interested in and come over here to the inspector and click on static. When I click on static, it says, hey, do you want me to do that for all the children? And of course, yes, I do. I want that to be calculated, every to them all to be marked as static. And then you see as soon as that happens, then we start baking uh, results. So knowing how that baking works uh, becomes kind of important. You won't get any baking until you have objects marked as static. Um, but uh, that's kind of what's happening. Now, in our case, I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm going to leave this automatic on as we start to build our other assets, uh, but I'm going to get rid of that point light here because I want to make sure that I'm using practical lights, that I don't just have some point light kind of sticking there, but that I actually have some, uh, some essentially some geometry that looks like that's where the light's coming from. So to do this, I'm going to use uh, my hanging light. I'm going to come and drag this um, into space here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, slide that hanging light up and place it in a reasonable place here. 
Maybe I'll put it right between those two and go ahead and stick it up into space there. Now, this is where my light is going to be coming from. I want to make sure there's actually some geometry so as the player walks through, then they can see what's happening. If I turn on the lights, it's completely black, of course, because uh, I don't have any Unity lights in the space. Um, but I want to make sure that I've got uh, this this kind of thing there. Now, with that uh, object there, if I hit F to frame it, when I create a new object like a let's say a spotlight which would work well for this case then it will put that new spotlight right where uh, that new that object was framed so here as I start to uh, actually make sure that I can see the lighting here I can come and adjust uh, the range of this uh, this particular spotlight um, I can actually uh, come in and change the spot angle for instance so I can uh, make that much wider um, I can change also things like, of course, the intensity if I need to, and even some of the color. So maybe I'm going to make this a little uh, more yellow, a um, little less uh, less pure white um, is that set up there. Now you can see that we're already getting some real-time uh, global illumination happening here, and that works out okay. Real-time lights are really nice because, uh, for instance, if I had, well, let me just move my sphere. Um, down into this area. If I put my s sphere in there, then I can already see that that's illuminated. Um, and if I make sure that that spotlight has uh, shadows, soft shadows in it, then you can see that already we're getting some bounce light off the sides, and so I don't have this really harsh, harsh look, or at least the the simulation of bounce light. The problem with real-time shadows is if everything is a real-time light, um, then suddenly as I'm looking down this long hallway like I might in the game, then suddenly all of those uh, vertices have to be painted in real-time. Um, so uh, using some solution of baked lights can help out. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to change the mode on this light from real-time to mixed and you'll see that suddenly we start to see some baking going on. So what will happen is it's going to bake some of this lighting um, into the uh, light map UVs that it's got set up. Once this is baked in there, then uh, when I'm looking a long way away, it's going to rely on the light map baked stuff. But when I get close, it will shift over to real time. What it means is that as the character is walking through the scene, then suddenly uh, as objects move, then we get uh, much more dynamic lights that actually make sense. Now, this is working pretty well. However, as I start to look at that, I don't believe that that light is actually on. And the reason is is that our hanging light, when we brought this in, since I just used default Lamberts in Unity, is that we don't have any sort of uh, emissive surface, anything that kind of looks like it's on. If we select that hanging light, in this case I actually have two materials assigned. One, this kind of uh, blue-gray that's on the outside, and the second is actually a material attached to the inside here that's set to white, that if I come in and turn on emissions, and change the color to something like white, then suddenly I can start to believe actually that there might actually be some light coming from there. So let's turn off 3D icons. Uh, I can start to see what's happening there. Now again, this isn't also all that impressive. I'll show you how to use the post-rendering stack in another tutorial and we'll want to make sure that we have that set up. But I can start to believe what's going on there. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Spotlight and I'm going to drag it to be a child of hanging light so that I've got this one object that if I move that one object, then that's how that would work. Um, there's some other things that can be kind of nice about doing this is to build what's called a prefab. Um, hallway actually is a prefab. It's a, a prefabricated asset that I can drag out and it can instantiate into the scene. In this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new um, uh, a new folder that I'm going to call prefabs and then I'm going to take my hanging light and I'm going to drag it into my prefabs folder. What that does is you see how now spotlight is blue as well? It means this hanging light, which I'm actually going to call hanging light prefab so that I don't confuse it with the other. Um, this is a prefab so that if I drag out another one of these, then not only does it tank the geometry, but it also has that other light with it. So I suddenly can instantiate that however I want, although I can also uh, simply take one that already exists and start to duplicate it. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to actually take this light, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'll drop one of these lights uh, every few uh, 
few splits here. So am I doing one, two, th one, two, three on the third one, one, two, three on the third one. Let's duplicate that, one, two, three, that third space, and let's duplicate that, one, two, three. I'm just gonna eyeball these in here really quick. And let's put one more over here. All right, so as we start to look there, we can start to see what's happening. Let me just show you a little bit about the power of prefabs. Um, what I've got here now is I've got uh, these five prefabs, or seven prefabs, they're all set up. The power of it is since they're instances of the same prefab, if I come into, say, the spotlight and decide, hey, there's way too much light there, uh, let's say that I'm going to bring the intensity down to 0.5. What I've done is I've reduced the spotlight intensity of that one light, but if I come up and click on this apply, what it will do is it will apply that new intensity to all of the prefabs, uh, all the instances of that same prefab. So this can be really useful. You have to be careful because if you want to use different light intensities, then you don't want to click that apply or else it will change that to all of them, but you can start to get that working. Now before we get too much further, uh, the detail of the, uh, there's some quality issues that I want to make sure and point out. One is that in order to, typical of Unity, in order to make sure this is really lightweight, uh, then they have some quality settings that can be a little low for what we want to do. So I'm going to come into the Edit, Project Settings, down into the Quality. And here, as you start to look, I'm working with Ultra for my download and my PC build. But you'll see that the pixel light count, the number of pixel lights to use, is set to 4. What you can think of this is is that kind of any, um, this isn't exactly right, but it's an easy way to think about it, that any vertex is only kind of getting light from four, uh, from four light sources. So I'm going to turn that up, maybe to say 64 or something, so that I can get more, uh, uh, so I can have more light sources actually eliminate, illuminating any spot um, that we have. Now notice that as I've uh, started to put these in, it's still baking and baking and baking. Because it's baking, sometimes you're going to see your lights actually change a little bit over time. Not the lights, but the illumination that exists uh, within your space. Uh, and that will start to build um, how that works. Okay, so let me uh, put a few more, make one more prefab just to reinforce how that works. I'm going to come in and grab my attached light uh, and bring it over here. I'm going to turn off my lights for a second so I can see what's going on here. Um, this attached light um, is one of these other ones that I built. Let's go ahead and rotate that uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and kind of tack it in there as we have that set. Um, and maybe I'm going to have this just attack. Uh, this light set here. So with this light, again, attached light, I've got two different um, settings here. One is just a white light. But let's say that I want to work on something like, um, let's say that I want to work with some geometry, or some lights that are red and some lights that are uh, green. To do this, what I can do is come in and create a new material. I'm going to call this my red light. Uh, with this red light material, I'm going to come in, make sure that it's emissive, and let's pick a red color, a nice bright red color. Uh, maybe I'll even turn it up to 2, so that, uh, not 21, but 2, so it's a little beefier. What this means is that now with this attached light, I can come in and you'll see that uh, it actually uh, should have two materials attached. Looks like one, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, so attached light. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right here in the materials. We've got these two here. One is the material and one is the light bulb. I'm going to replace red light with the attached light there. Um, although it looks like I probably have these. Yeah, I have them um, actually numbered wrong. So, oh, I might have just dragged that into the wrong spot. So let's put this into there. What that does is it's going to make that little spot, uh, that spot red, so that it's set there. I'm also going to come in, and uh, since I'm not doing completely bake light, we'll talk about that later, I'm going to come in and put a uh, point light um, into that area. Now I'm going to put this point light as a child of attached light, make sure that I'm zeroing out its transforms um, so that it matches its location, and then I can go ahead and put that, uh, that light in there. I'll take that point light, go ahead and make it red so that it matches what's happening. Let's go ahead and kind of start to see um, how that's worked out. Finally, I'm going to make sure that, yes, I want to have shadows. I'm going to use soft shadows and uh, want to make sure that I'm using mixed so that it will be part of the calculation. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do is uh, with this light I'm going to come in and reduce the the near plane so that it catches some of this stuff so let's go uh, like 0 0.01 uh, looks like that's all we can get 0.1 um, so that we've got um, that set up there okay so what we start to get is uh, is we can use that. Um, maybe uh, as I've got this, I'm going to drag this into the prefabs and I'm going to call this attach light um, red prefab. Um, and then uh, here I'll put, I'm just going to uh, take this attach light red prefab and uh, duplicate it. Oops, I already have duplicated it. Rotate that negative 90 and go ahead and put it on the other side of this room. Um, so that we've got that set there. All right. Okay. So you can see this still baking. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, stop, uh, stop the recording here uh, and go ahead and light some other spaces here really quick again using these same techniques that we've had and I'll come back when the baking is done. Alright just to give you an update at this point uh, I've placed a whole bunch of lights so you can start to see how all of it's uh, coming through. Notice that it's still doing a lot of baking I've put a lot of lights in here and so a lot of it's going to take a while uh, for this to finish. Uh, while this is doing this though, let me talk a little bit about uh, how we'd move through the space. I'm going to take my main camera and delete it, uh, and in the meantime come in and import our characters package. This will give me a variety of different ways to interact with the scene. Um, most of them are fairly minimalistic, uh, pretty lean uh, in what they have, but they should give us enough for what, what we've got. Uh, when you bring in any package, of course, it compiles the scripts, brings in both assets, um, textures, um, and any um, models that we might use uh, in these. So when this comes in, I'm going to use the first-person controller just to be able to start to see how this um, works out. Okay, so now in the standard assets folder, I can come into the characters, and there's a first-person controller. There's a prefabs collection. I'm going to bring the first person controller in, drop it right into the scene here. Come in, maybe I'm going to adjust where it's located and rotate it a bit so it changes from a little bit different place. I'm going to go ahead and maximize on play as I do this. If I start to play, it's going to pause the baking, um, but you can start to see um, how this is laid out. Um, so what happens now is I can start running through the scene. Um, and you can see where I've placed the lights, um, where I've placed um, any of those lights that are set in the attached lights, um, and see how this is built. Now, most of the baking isn't done, so we don't have a really sophisticated output, um, but you still shouldn't can see kind of uh, the basics of, of how uh, this has been attacked. So, um, then we can see this other area here. Here, I'll just jump over there so we can see what's going on. All right, um, so I'm going to let this uh, continue baking using the mixed lights, and I'll be back. Okay, so the baking has completed. Um, we can, if uh, we play this now, we should be able to run through it. Notice that that's completely black. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and we'll be able to start to see all of the lighting that we have, including some kind of nice bounced light um, that may have come through all of the different spaces. Now, while we're at it, I just want to talk really quickly about uh, the post-processing stack. Um, to access this, you just go into the a uh, Asset Store. I cover this in another tutorial, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I'm going to go ahead and bring it in really quickly. I'm going to import this post-processing stack. This is a big collection of uh, post-processing uh, functions that can be attached to a camera. And once they're attached to the camera, it can do things like bloom the lights out, give us some screen space, ambient occlusion, um, et cetera, stuff that um, things like Unreal automatically build in um, to their default camera. Here you have to add it, pretty typical of the way Unity attaches it, as in adding on new things as you go, rather than peeling them back in Unreal if you're too, if you're too heavy. OK, so let's just take a second to, to bring in. 
once it's all in, uh, the way that this works is you need to identify what your camera is. In our case, on the first person controller, first person character actually has the camera component on it. To do this, you click on the add component and then start typing in post processing. Post processing behavior is what we add. It's looking for a profile to create this profile. Uh, we'll come down to the post processing profile. I'm just going to call this PPP, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to attach this post processing profile to the post processing behavior. At this point, then I can make all the adjustments um, that make this beautiful, although can be a little bit expensive. So, for instance, I can make sure that I've got a vignette on it, so I've got a vignette around the side. I can make sure that I've got ambient occlusion, so you can see the ambient occlusion starting to show up there, including turning up the intensity um, or the radius of that screen space, ambient occlusion, whatever I need, and the ability to do things like uh, turn on bloom. Whereas if you turn on bloom, uh, I'm going to come down and turn down the threshold a little bit, then we're going to be able to start to see the bloom of these bright lights, so they start to show up, so that when you're actually walking through the space, um, then we can start to see that those lights, I start to believe that that's actually where the light is coming from. Now, the last thing that we would probably want to look at, but we'll do this in another tutorial, is the idea of using um, light probes so that uh, this doesn't actually look uh, completely black, that we can use this mixed lighting uh, from, um, um, from both real-time and bake lighting to get the sophisticated lighting effects that we have here but still get a good illumination there. But anyway, that's all for this tutorial. I hope it's been useful. Talk to you later.